everyone. This is Joe Mock for Club 19, and I'm here at Arts Bar tonight where we're going to hear a couple local bands rocking out the place, and that, of course, is the Stingrays and Giant Eden. Now, as we enter the summer of 1985, it's very interesting to note that the local music scene is extremely healthy right now. It just seems like no matter where you go in Santa Barbara, no matter what night, there's plenty of music, all sorts of original tunes being played by all sorts of bands. They just seem to be coming out of the woodwork. One of those bands who's really creating a stir is the Stingrays. They put out their own single in, uh, last year, and now they're working on an album. And not only that, they've gotten out of the Santa Barbara scene, which although Santa Barbara has some good clubs, it's important to get out and play some other cities. They've been down in LA, the Stingrays. And to get an idea of what it's like playing in LA, we're going to talk to the drummer Troy Thacker, who I know is just as excited about the Stingrays' uh, progress as I am. Troy. Troy. Hey. <laughs> We're talking about the L.A. gigs. This is Troy, the drummer for the Stingrays, Troy Thacker. Uh, what's it like playing down in L.A.? Is it different than Santa Barbara? It's really great. It's really great. Okay, Troy, well, maybe we'll talk to somebody else in the band over here. Um, this is John Ferreter, who's, uh, I, you might call him the leader. Could we call you the leader of the band? Uh, yeah, I pay most of the bills. Uh, now, over here, we've got Greg Whitey Pryor. Greg, uh, would you call him the leader of the band, John? No, he just pays most of the bills. He just pays most of the bills, of course. Now, I, you guys have been getting lots of press, as you can see out here, the band, lots of press. Look at that, huh? Something that a lot of other bands would really want, have a press packet like that. And uh, when you're playing down in Los Angeles, do you feel like, for example, a, a different kind of pressure than you feel here in Santa Barbara? At first we did. Ac actually, the gigs that we've done down in Los Angeles have gone better than most of the shows we've done here, except for the bigger shows we've done in town. And in Los Angeles, it's a different type of audience that you play to, because most of the club gigs we do up here, you play three or four sets, and there's a lot of pressure from the club owners to, well, basically play songs that they want to hear. Right. Down in Los Angeles, they want to see you put on an exciting show, and they want you to draw people. And if the, you draw people, and they drink a lot, and the crowd is into you, then you're deemed to be doing rather successful. And for a band like us to come down from Santa Barbara, and do that both down in Los Angeles and up in San Francisco. We consider ourselves quite successful. Things well, are going very well. I consider them quite successful, too, considering how many bands have tried so hard to break into the Los Angeles market here in town. Why do you think that the Stingray... Wait a minute here. You're not taller than me. Oh, that's that. <laughs> How's it going? Okay. Why do you think that you, the Stingrays have been able to crack into the market so well? I mean, you guys have played Madame Wong's probably how many times just in the last few months? Three, four times? Uh, about eight. We've been playing Wong's about twice a month eight. for the last five months, I think. Really? So we've been down there about... We started playing at Wong's in August of last year. And we've got, I think, our 16th or 17th gig there coming up later this month. That's amazing. I don't think there's any other band in this town who can even approach that for getting out of town and reaching a new audience. Now, have you reached a new audience? Have you developed a, an audience down there, do you think? We're still developing an audience. Okay. We, we have, we've picked up some fans down there and some friends who come out to all the shows, but it's, the, the key is um, playing with bigger name bands so that we can kind of draw on their you know, club going people, so they'll come out and see us. Right. One thing which has helped is the fact that um, we've gotten airplay on the single we did last year, and we've gotten a lot of press down there, just articles written about us, and we've done some advertising. So people come out, and as long as we put on a good show while they're there, they'll come back out. Uh -huh. You know, it's a matter of, it's like anything, it's just a matter of pushing. And, well, well I was, I was going to say that you, you started to ask why were we able to do it, or how were we able to get to that point? I think playing about 150 times at the shack, <laughs> our 40 or 50 original songs that we had, set us up in a situation where we could walk in and play our own material and not really be that nervous about it, you know, the first couple times out. It's, uh, it's not that it's become routine, but it's, it's fun. It's what we thrive on. Right, and the shack is another wild place in this area that we're going to have to get to on one of our shows. Um, before we go, I, I seem to think that you guys have a bass player, right? The, Corey, is he playing Pac-Man over there? Or? He, he was. I think he got high score, so he retired. So he Corey, come here and say, say hello real quick to the people in Santa Barbara, OK? Talk to the machine won again. The machine won again. OK. <laughs> Haven't beaten him yet. But I'm sure the Stingrays are going to beat the odds and get out there and make some noise in this town and all along uh, Southern California. What do you say, guys? We're ready. We're, we're ready. We've you know, we're heading back down to LA. How you about guys you? Are play you ready? A song? Yeah. Let's play a song right OK, now. you go back and play a song. While they get ready to play a song, 
Uh, wait, you got to get the drum set up. I love that. While they get ready to play a song, I just want to remind you that the Stingray is only one of the many bands in your town that you can go see on any given night. So go on out and check them out. And uh, I'm sure tonight we're going to have a good time. But for right now, this is Joe Mock for Club 19, turning you back to the studio. I used to love him a lot. <laughs> and he loved me. But he changed. I've had frills and champagne. I've had cheap frills and champagne. And I know you set out for my heart to sink. But I'm on a titanic train of thought. What can I say, you know? I could have left you, I could have left you a long time ago, but I didn't. He was so, and I was this, and he was that, and I became this. But I loved him. I loved you a lot. And I tried real hard, but it's, you know, people just, they don't play by their rules. They never stick to the rules. They just don't, and it isn't fair. Or fit. It's as if it's as if they have no morals. <laughs> but I, I can't stop. Why do I always think of you? Why do I always think of him? I think of him everywhere I go. I see him everywhere. Everywhere I am, I see him everywhere I go. And I, and I don't care anymore. I don't care anymore. And I wish he were dead. I wish. I wish I were dead. 